Welcome to Learn It Training. The exercise files for today's course are located in the video description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to Time Management Strategize Your Day with Outlook. My name is Mo Jones and I'll be your guide through this course today. You're here today because you're a daily Outlook user and you want to see what Outlook has to offer. You agree that time is important. You're looking for technical tools that extend beyond paper and pencil. And instead of adding yet another program, we will dive in to see what Microsoft Outlook has to offer. How can Outlook help to strategize our day? We'll learn the tools that help to show tasks, filter those tasks, decide, and act accordingly. We'll take it a step further and automate those actions. The choice is yours. You can create a visual to see a snapshot of important items, or you can turn them into a task. It's time to learn practical tools that can help you better plan and execute all that you must conduct on any given day. We'll talk about how to effectively use Outlook to strategize our day. We'll increase our regulation of time using Outlook and we'll utilize several Outlook time management tools. Let's go ahead and dive in. Welcome back. Well, before we go ahead and dive into our objectives and launch our desktop application, let's consider this popular quote. Most people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. Well, what we want to make sure that we do today is to have a plan so that we do not fail. Go ahead and answer this question. Do you allocate time daily to manage your calendar? Are you blocking off 10 to 15 minutes on your actual calendar so that you can manage your calendar for the day or manage your calendar for the week or even manage your calendar for the month? If you're applying any one of those methods, you value time. And that is a great first step into having success with strategizing your day. If not, we want to make sure that by the end of this course that you will apply one of those methods here as well. What we want to do is go ahead and take a look at Outlook as a time management tool. Now, you may be using other methods to try to manage your time, such as sticky notes or a notepad. Maybe you're using another mobile app or maybe another web app as well. As daily users of Outlook, let's see how we can use it as a tool so that we can effectively strategize our day. This course has three segments. The first segment, we'll talk about how to effectively use Outlook to strategize our day. So we're saying Outlook is going to be the tool that we're going to be using. In the second segment, we'll talk about how to increase our regulation of time using Outlook. Remember, we cannot control time. Time is fixed. We can only regulate our tasks as well. In the third segment, we'll talk about how to utilize Outlook time management tools. So these are additional tools that we'll take a look at, kind of bonus tools, some tools we can use to automate processes for us, or we can create a two-click solution there as well. For our first part here, we'll talk about how to use Outlook to strategize our day. We'll be taking a look at the to-do bar and then the task app. We'll take a look at different tools that can help us to be efficient, and tools that can help us to be effective. Once we've explored those different tools, we'll apply the Pareto principle, which is a really nice concept that helps us to prioritize and manage our tasks as well. So go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and launch your Outlook desktop client and come right back. We'll take a look at the to-do bar and we will start creating some tasks. Welcome back. So I went ahead and launched my Outlook desktop application here. And now what I want to do is go ahead and turn on the to-do bar. Now, before we turn on the to-do bar, let's just kind of make sure that we can have a uniform layout here. Here's kind of the default layout here for Outlook. Here's our folder pane. We can see that it's fully expanded. And if you do not have the latest updates, you may be seeing your icons down here, such as your mail, your calendar, maybe you have your contacts over here, and your task will be kind of hidden over here as well. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and collapse the actual folder pane by clicking on the collapse icon here. And that will allow us to see our icons here in a vertical stack. So we'll see a couple of them here as well. 
Mine is showing up here at the very, very top because I have the latest updates and trying out the new features. But let's go ahead and collapse the folder pane here. So I'll go ahead and click here. I'll minimize the folder pane. And now I can see my icons up here. So here's my mail, my calendar, my people. Here's my tasks. Again, you may be seeing them down here, but you should be able to see at least your task app down here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on the view tab. And on the view tab, what I want to do is go ahead and turn on my to do bar. So on the view tab in the layout command group, I have my to do bar here. Now, what this will allow me to do is allow me to view my messages on one portion of my screen. And on the other portion of my screen, I'll have a side pane over here where I can view my tasks. If I have any tasks here and then down on the bottom, I can view my calendar and any agenda item. So any kind of upcoming appointments that I have here as well. And it's a really nice tool. It's not turned on by default. And again, it's going to give us a really nice option to just kind of capture everything at a glance here. So I'll click on the drop down here for my to do bar. I'll go ahead and turn on my tasks so I can see that shows up here. I don't currently have any tasks in here. I'll go ahead and click on there again and I'll turn on my calendar. I can see my calendar shows up here at the bottom. I don't have any calendar items here for today. This is my training outlook. But if I did, I would see an agenda listed down here for my upcoming appointments here as well. So very good. So we turned on the to do bar. Well, now what can we do? Well, right over here to the top right, we can see we're getting a prompt here. It says, go ahead and type a new task. And then we'll have a little collapsible menu to show the items that we have, the tasks that are due today, or maybe next week or next month. And then we have some different flags that we can use here, such as the due date. I'll keep it simple. I'll go ahead and click right inside of that text box and I'll create a task. I'll call this task A. I'll go ahead and press enter. And just like that, I was able to go ahead and create a task. Now, I don't have any details in here yet. I can double click on it. So if you double click on that task, here's the details pane that kind of comes up and I can add some details in here. We'll cover this when we take a deeper dive into our task app. But for right now, we can just go ahead and create a quick task. Here's a flag to the right. If I right click on that flag, I have some different options. So maybe this is something that has a custom date. Maybe this is due tomorrow. I want to go ahead and follow up with this tomorrow. I can go ahead and add a reminder if I want to. So for this one, I'll say this one is due tomorrow. And I'll right click again. And I want to go ahead and add a reminder. So here's my little custom dialog box here. So I can establish a start date, the due date, and I can go ahead and set a reminder. I want a reminder around lunchtime on Thursday. So I'll go down to 12 and I'll press OK. So I have a reminder here. I'll go ahead and create another task. And I'll call this one task B. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this one. This one is going to be due next week. I'm not really sure of what date next week so far. This is one of the good things about the to do bar. We can just kind of park things here so that we can visually see them as we're checking our mail. This way they don't get lost in the shuffle and we can come back and just make some modifications here. I'll say this one is due next week. And now I can kind of see I have a uh, little hierarchy here. Here are my tasks that are due tomorrow. Any tasks that are due next week, I have it here as well. Now, this is really good. One of the things that we can realize too is that we're talking about time management. And these email messages that we have, they can easily become tasks and tasks can easily become projects. So if you're checking a message, a really, really nice thing to do is just to go ahead and flag that message. So I can go ahead and right click on an actual message. Here's my marketing message here. I'll go ahead and right click on it. This is very important. I don't have time to really get to it right now, but I want to make sure that I can just flag it for follow up so that it does not get lost in the shuffle. So I'll just go ahead and I'll flag it for today. 
And then if I want to come back a little later, I can come in here and edit that here as well. If I double click on it, it actually opens the actual email message for me. So I have all of my details in here and I am good to go. All right. So again, really nice feature. We can see them side by side. We'll take a deeper dive here, but go ahead and pause the video. Click on the view tab. Go ahead and turn on your to do bar. Go ahead and add your three top tasks in there. Add your three top tasks and go ahead and add a due date and a reminder as necessary and come right back. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you had some fun creating your three top tasks and assigning due dates and reminders as necessary. Now we can clearly see any tasks that are upcoming and we have a nice hierarchy in there as well. Well, now what we want to talk about is just how we can be efficient. So to be more specific, we want to take it a step further. In order to be efficient, a good thing to do is being able to identify tasks in your mailbox and marking them as well. We can quickly identify tasks in our mailbox because we can visually see them because we have our to-do bar turned on. Let's go ahead and talk about flagging messages that are important. We'll also talk about assigning categories to different messages that are important as well. Once we flag them and we assign categories to them, we can use different methods to be able to find them. Now, in our last segment, we actually flagged a message. Well, why would you want to flag a message? Well, you want to go ahead and flag a message because remember, when we receive messages, we have to kind of determine how important they are and how urgent they are. So if something is not urgent, but maybe it's important, we want to make sure that we at least identify it so that we can get to it at a later time. So I'm going to go ahead and flag a couple of messages here. I already have one flag. Here's my marketing email message. So I can go ahead and flag one of those. Here is a one-on-one -on -one meeting I need to go ahead and prepare for. So I'll go ahead and flag that one as well. I can actually just move my mouse over to the right in the flag column. And I can just go ahead and actually just flag it just like that. So this way, no need to right click and specify when this is due. Just clicking on that flag will make sure that it's added to my to-do bar for today. And now when I'm ready, I can go back during that 15 minute session where I'm managing my calendar or my tasks. I can come in here. I can double click on that message or I can right click and perform some different options over here, such as customize it in terms of when it's due, when I need to start this, what I need to prepare for and add any notes here as well. So that's one way. Another way, here's another one here, maybe for project Q. So here's project Q. One of the things that I can do as well is I can go ahead and drag this to my task. So here are my task. Notice if I just mouse over my task, it gives me a quick sneak peek at my task, kind of mirroring my to-do bar here. But what I can do is I can just drag this message just like this. I left mouse clicked on it and I can drag it. I'm going to go ahead and drag it to my tasks and let it go. And that basically creates a task for me. It gives me the full window where I can go ahead and specify my information. I want to keep it simple for now. I'll just go ahead and save and close that. So we see three ways that we can create a task from a message. We can right click and flag it for follow up. We can just click on the flag in the flag column, or we can go ahead and drag that message to our task icon. Now, another thing we want to talk about is categories. Now, I like to create categories and use them for my calendar and for my messages and for my tasks as well. Why would I want to use categories? Well, it's another great way to get a quick visual on your important messages here as well. So for this message, I'll head on over to my project A. I'm going to go ahead and right click. I like to right click here. So here's a message regarding project A. If I right click, I can go ahead and categorize that. If you have not created any categories, we have these basic categories here, such as blue category, green category. If I click on blue category, I can see that it assigns a category right here for me. Okay. And, but what if I want to make it a little more descriptive? 
I'm going to go ahead and right click on it. I want to see all of my categories. So I'll click on all categories here. And here's my dialog box. And now I can either create a new category or I can rename or kind of modify an existing category. For this blue category, I'm going to go ahead and rename this one to Project A. So I'll just type Project A in here. And I'll go ahead and press OK. If I wanted to go ahead and create another one, since I'm here, I'll create one for Project B as well. So I'll click on New. I'll call this Project B. And uh, I'll just stick with default color here. If you want to assign a shortcut key to it, you can. So one of these shortcut keys, Control F2 through Control F12. I'm OK without the shortcut key. I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. Here's my new project. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right. So what I want you to do, go ahead and create a few categories. So really think about some of the different options that you have. Think about your responsibilities and try to think about at least three or four different areas where you can kind of go ahead and create little contents or, or little layouts or little buckets for your actual calendar. All right. So go ahead and create a few, flag a few messages, assign categories to a few messages here, and come right back. Welcome back. So we talked about different ways that we can be efficient. And mainly what we want to do is identify any task-based item in our mailbox and mark them. So we saw that we can mark them by either flagging the message or we can assign a category to it here as well. I actually have two categories assigned to this one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll clear the categories from here. And then I'll simply just come back and I'll assign the appropriate category here, which is Project A. And down here, I'll go ahead and assign Project B. And so this is effective because you can clearly see you have your task-based items marked. Two flags, two categories. It's also showing up over here in your task pane as well. You can actually assign a flag and a category to a message as well. So that is also another option. But now what we want to do, let's talk about being effective. So being effective is actually being able to act on marked off items. So we need to have a way where we can just make sure that we can see everything. And once we can see them, we can go ahead and act on them. Again, the to-do bar is a really, really nice way to kind of see everything here. The other option that we have is by running an actual filter or we can view messages by. Take a look at the top right here of your inbox. And maybe you're currently arranging your messages by date. Well, we can change that because again, we want to find our important messages. If I click on this drop down, one of the things that I can do, we notice that we have a filter section. So we can filter for flagged messages. So this will just reveal all of our flagged messages for us. Under the arrange, we can arrange by category. And so these are two additional ways that we can go ahead during that 15 minute session when you're managing your task based items on your calendar, we'll go ahead and run our filter and we'll categorize or arrange by category. I'll filter for flagged mail. And here I just ran a quick filter. It just temporarily hides my other mail for me. And now I can focus on these actual flagged messages here. And so now if I want to go ahead and make a decision in terms of when I want this to be due, I can go ahead and do that here as well. All right. So I can right click on my flag. I can go ahead and click on, let's see, this is due today. I'll go ahead and click on custom. And this is marketing. I'll go ahead and start this on Friday. And this is going to be due the following Friday. I'll even go ahead and set a reminder on that Friday right before lunchtime, maybe 1130 this time. And I'll go ahead and press OK. All right. So now I can drill down to what I'm looking for, which is the benefit of using a filter. And now I can come in here and make some decisions here as well. So if I can right click on this one here as well, and maybe I'm still not ready. 
just go ahead and say this is due this week and I'm good to go. So that's how we filter for flagged messages. But what about those messages that I categorized? This time, I'll click on that filter on the top right here. I'm currently flagging messages. I'll head down to the Arrange By section, and I want to arrange by categories. So I'll click on Categories. Make sure I turn off my filter to see all mail. Okay. And the only thing here is that I need to make sure that I'm sorting Z to A, because down here I'm sorting A to Z. I'll just sort Z to A, and that brings my categorized mail up here to the very, very top. So at this point, if I wanted to go ahead and convert this into a task, I can go ahead and do that. So I can just flag as a to-do item. And as you can see, my project B is now both a task and categorized mail. And so this is where we want to get to. So we can identify task-based items, mark them so that we can visually see them. And once we can see them, we can go ahead and manage them at a due date and different options there as well. So go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and flag a few more messages. Go ahead and assign categories to messages and go ahead and run your filter for flag mail. Once you're done, go ahead and customize those flag messages that you have. Clear your filter, go back to all mail and arrange by categories and then make a decision on those categorized messages here as well. You can simply add a flag to it and fill in the details and come right back. Welcome back. So filtering for flag messages and searching by categorized mail is a very, very nice thing to do, very effective thing to do. But let's go ahead and take it a step further. What I can do is create a, what's called a search folder. Go ahead and click on your folder tab. Now on your folder tab, we have what's called search folder. Right? Now, one of the great things is that a search folder, it behaves like a virtual folder. So it will pretty much provide you with almost like search results for particular messages that you're looking for. So imagine if we were to type in the search bar to kind of just look for Categorize mail or mail that has been flagged for follow up, and it gives us different results here. Well, that's what a search folder will do. But the great thing is, we don't need to conduct that search all the time. The search folder will always be available for us, and it will search our inbox for anything that's been categorized or flagged as well. So go ahead and click on New Search Folder. Here's my new search folder dialog box here. And there's different options. So I have, I can create a search folder for reading mail, such as unread mail, but here's what I want, right? So mail flagged for follow-up. If I go down in the organizing mail, I can search for mail that has been categorized. So I want to create two search folders, one for mail that's flagged for follow-up and one that has categorized mail. Again, this is just another option to filtering by flag messages or arranging your messages by categories here. I'll go ahead and click on mail flag for follow-up. I'll go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, it goes right to that folder. And here are my two messages that I currently have flagged for follow-up here as well. If I want to see those search folders, I do need to expand the folder pane. So I'll go ahead and expand the folder pane here. And down here, under the search folders section, I can see here is my follow-up here as well. I'll go ahead and create another search folder. This one will be for my categorized mail. So I'll go ahead and click on new search folder. And I'll scroll down to organizing mail. I'll click on categorize mail. And here, if I wanted to, I can actually choose the specific category that I want to use. So if I just want to create a search folder for my project A or project B, I can do so. 
I like to see all of my categorized mail. In the future, if I want to be able to drill down to a particular category, I can do that. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. And here are the different mail that I currently have categorized, and they're showing here as well. So this is just a nice way for us to really just see everything here as well. So if I go ahead and pin my folder pane, here are my two search folders. Here's my categorized mail. Here are my messages that have been flagged for follow-up here as well. I prefer this method as opposed to going to the inbox and arranging by category or filtering for flag mail. It's just a quick click, and I can see those two options here as well. So go ahead and create two search folders, one for your categorized mail, one for your follow-up. After you create those two search folders, go ahead and flag another message and categorize another message and see how it updates here in real time. And come right back. Welcome back. So far, we've turned on our to-do bar. We've identified important messages and we've marked them and we took it a step further. We're able to identify or find those marked messages as well. Now, once we have some task, what we want to do is utilize some type of method or concept so that we can strategize our day as well. Now, here is a world known concept, the Pareto principle. And based on this principle, 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. Or maybe you've heard other expressions such as 80% of the work comes from 20% of the team members. Maybe you're in that 20% that's getting 80% of the work done there. Or maybe you've also heard that 80% of your profits come from 20% of your customers as well. So how does this fit in to time management? Well, we want to make sure that we are not giving equal weight to all of our tasks. So we've identified our tasks. Now what? We want to go ahead and make sure that we prioritize them according to this principle. So for example, if we have 10 tasks, they're not all equally important. We want to identify what are our most important tasks, two of them. So what are the two most important tasks? If we have five tasks, which one is our most important? And so we'll take a look at how we can apply the Pareto principle using the to-do bar here as well. I am back in my Outlook. And while you were away, I added a few more tasks. Just wanted to make sure that I have 10 here. So I have 10 tasks. I can clearly see them here. And now I have to go ahead and decide, well, which one of these are the most important? And they don't have equal weight. So what I want to do is prioritize. If I click on any one of my tasks here, so go ahead and click on any one of your tasks. I'll click on my project queue here and take a look. We'll notice that we receive a contextual tab here for the task list. And there's different things that we can do, but over here in the tags command group, we can specify or designate that a task is of high importance or it's of low importance here as well. So we want to go ahead and apply the Pareto principle. We'll take some time, take a look at our tasks and pretty much just try to figure out which ones are the most important here. So I'm going to go ahead and assign the high importance to two of my tasks. My project queue is pretty important. I'll go ahead and designate that that is high importance. And I'll go ahead and designate one more. My one on one meeting here upcoming is of high importance as well. So I'll go ahead and flag that for high importance. Again, we want to have a method here. We want to just create a nice hierarchy and identify what is most important. So go ahead and take some time. Click on your different task, identify your top two out of 10 or one out of five and designate them as high importance and come right back. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and move on to segment two of our course here. We will discuss increasing our regulation of time. So we'll take a look at a really nice plan called the REP plan. We'll take a deeper dive into our task app so that we can manage our tasks. And then we'll also take a look at the concept of 
calendar blocking. Let's take a look at the REP plan. So the REP plan is a very nice plan to have in place here. It's a step-by-step -step methodology for daily planning, and it involves recording, estimating, and prioritizing. So the first thing we want to do is record. So we want to write down everything that we must do. This is very important. Once we've written down everything that we must do, we want to go ahead and estimate how long it will take to actually complete this task. Now, typically this information will be known to you because typically when you're assigned the task, you will be given a due date. If that is not the case, this can be the most challenging of the three. Um, you would need to kind of determine how long it will take to complete a particular task. And then the third part here is prioritizing. So what is the most important? Remember, not all of our tasks will have equal weight. If we do treat them equally, we'll experience burnout. So we want to make sure that we prioritize. So far, if you take a look, we've actually put some of these into practice here. We've been recording by writing down everything we must do by using our task app or our to-do bar. And we've prioritized by using the Pareto principle. And now we need to go ahead and take it a step further and estimate how long will it take to actually complete these tasks? Back in my outlook here. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take a look at our task app. So again, there's a couple of different ways that we can access it here. If you have your folder pane minimized like I do, you should see your task app appearing on your vertical bar here. And I can simply just click on there. I can also type in the search box. I can type on task. And here I can open up my tasks from here as well. I'll go ahead and click on the icon. And here are my tasks. So this is my actual task app. And as you can see, I can see all of my tasks. Here are my 10 tasks here that I've created. Now we'll just take a look at the ribbon here for our task. So here I am inside. If I click on any one of these, I can just kind of navigate and manage them. But right here, there's different views that I can use. So maybe I want to see all of my completed tasks or maybe any one that's prioritized, or maybe I want to see the active. So there's different ones, different views here that I can take a look at. Also here, we can go ahead and and specify what is of high importance or low importance. I can also categorize a task here as well. So if you click on the different views, here are my prioritized tasks. Here are my active tasks. So you can just go ahead and kind of cycle through the different ones here. Here are my tasks due today, next seven days, anything that's overdue. Oh, nothing's overdue, that's great. Here's the detail list, just have a lot of columns here. I can see my completed tasks are also in here, indicated by the green check mark. My simple list just kind of removes some of the column headers for me. Here's my to-do list. In any event, I just want to view my active tasks here. And let's go ahead and create a new task. So I'm in my task app on the home tab. I can go ahead and create a new task. Because what we want to talk about here is the REP plan. Now remember the REP plan, it's what's going to help us to really take it a step forward here. What we'll notice is that when we create a new task, we have all the tools that we need to incorporate the REP plan. I'll go ahead and create a new task. Here's my dialog box. And I have everything here that I need. I'll go ahead and call this, I'll assign a task here. And I'll just say create um, presentation for client. So I'm recording it. The next part is I'm kind of estimating how long this will take. So I want to start working on this on the following Monday. And this is going to be due in two weeks. So, right. So again, it's going to be 14 days. The status in progress, I've already put in just a little bit of work for this here as well. 
I can change this number to the percentage com complete, maybe 10% so far. And this is going to be high priority. I want to establish a reminder on the day that is due, maybe around 9 a.m. And I'm good to go. So here we can see that we can apply the REP principle right here by creating a task because here we can record. Here we can estimate the amount of time that it will take to complete the task. And here we can prioritize whether it's high priority or low priority here as well. And so that's the beauty of working with the task app. I can go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and click on close and I'm good to go. Here I can see it's designated for a high priority and everything is filled out and I'm good to go, All right? So go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and create some new tasks or you can double click on an existing task to pull up the details here. Go ahead and apply the REP principle by assigning a due date, writing down the name, and um, go ahead and specify the priority and come right back. Now that we've applied the REP plan, let's take a deeper dive here into our actual task app. So here are my tasks. I currently have 11. And how can we manage our tasks here? Well, on the home tab, we do have a small manage task area that we can kind of designate. Because what if we're finished with a task? A task has been completed. Well, what can we do to designate that? We can go ahead and mark it as complete. Maybe my task D, let's see. Task C, maybe this one is complete. It's done, right? So it was due today. I'll mark that as complete. And as you can see, it marks it as complete and removes it from my list because currently I'm taking a look at my active tasks here. If I want to see all of my completed tasks, I can go ahead and click on completed. And this shows me all of my completed tasks here. Notice some of them actually have categories in here as well. And I can come back to my active tasks. So here's my task C that was completed today. I still receive a nice hierarchy. So I can just kind of manage my completed task here as well. I'll go back to active. So what if I want to go ahead and remove a particular task, what can I do? Well, here's my flag. I can go ahead and right click here and I can go ahead and I can mark it complete right here if I want to. I can go ahead and delete the task right here if I want to. I can do that as well. Maybe for task, let's see, for task D, I'll go ahead and click here and I'll simply go ahead and remove this from the list. It lets me know that once the flag is removed from this item, it will no longer appear in the to-do bar daily task lists and tasks. So if I just go ahead and remove this, then that takes care of that for me here as well. If I right click on these different tasks, I have some different options here that I can utilize. Again, I can categorize it. I can even move it if I want to. I can move it to another particular folder if I want to here as well. But one of the things I want to do, my project B here, now, I did realize, well, maybe this is something that's not really for me. Maybe this is something that someone on my team can take over. So if I go ahead and double click here. All right, so I'll go ahead and double click here on this, this flagged message. Okay, so I'll go back here and open that. So this was a flag message. So it's, it's just flag for follow up. But what I can do is move it to a task. Okay. And so now I've converted that flagged message into an actual task. And now I can come in here and specify the start date if I want to. So I'll go ahead and do that. This needs to be started on the 16th. The due date will be the 23rd. It's high priority and not started yet. But right now, I already have the details here, but again, I converted my followed up message here into a task by moving it to the task. But now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and assign this task to someone on my team. 
Because remember, sometimes it's necessary to delegate a particular task, depending on the urgency or the importance here as well. So I want to go ahead and assign this to someone. So I'll go ahead and click on Assign Task. And I can just type in the name of the individual that I want to assign the task to. Once I type in the name of the individual, I have a couple of options here on the bottom. I can keep an updated copy of the task on my task list. So any changes that are made, I can see them. Or I can just have the option to have a status report sent to me when the task is completed. I'll go ahead and uncheck the option to keep an updated copy. I just want a status report when this task is actually com completed. I have enough tasks here that I'm managing. I just want to know when this is finished here. I'll go ahead and assign that. I'll go ahead and click on send. Okay. And as you can see, it's no longer showing up here and my tasks as well. So we can mark tasks as complete. We can remove them essentially by deleting them. We can go ahead and customize them. We can convert a follow-up message into a task by using the move command, moving it to a task, and we're good to go. Finally, we're able to assign a particular task to someone else. They'll receive an email letting them know that a task has been assigned to them here as well. We have some other things here that we can use. Again, we can specify high importance or low importance. We can add categories um, to a particular task here as well. And we can go ahead and take a look at the different views so we can find what we're looking for. All right. So go ahead and manage a couple of your tasks here. Maybe mark some of them as complete. Maybe some of the original tasks that we created were just test tasks. Mark them as complete. Go ahead and assign a task to someone else. Just let them know that you're just you know, you're just testing out the feature and not actually assigning a task to them and come right back. Welcome back. Now, in order to increase our regulation of time, let's talk about the concept of calendar blocking. Calendar blocking is basically blocking off time on your calendar. So here's a snapshot of my calendar for December 15th. And as you can see, I have different blocks here. The first block is for creative content. That's just an hour a day that I kind of designate for myself to make sure that all of my projects are up to date. Here I had some training. This was kind of fixed. Made sure that that was on my calendar. And I threw lunch in there as well. And I was working on an internal project down here. Now, as you can see, we left a little space in between each of these. We want to be realistic. We don't want to put things back to back here. We want to insert a small amount of space in between our different appointments. And these are really important because maybe what we can do is in these spaces, we can sit down and take a look at our calendar and make sure that we're blocking off time every day to actually manage our calendar here as well. Now, calendar blocking, it makes your calendar a true reflection of your day. It quickly allows you to be able to say yes or no based on what you currently have on your calendar. I do have some colors in here, so I assigned categories for my creative content, for my courses, and for my internal projects here as well. Calendar blocking has several benefits. Another benefit that it has is it allows us to provide a monthly utilization report. Many of us are working remotely from home and our employers are asking us to kind of indicate how we spent our time. And here, if we block off our calendar, we can see that here as well. I'm going to open my Outlook and let's go ahead and block off some time on our calendar for today. So I've launched my Outlook here and I currently don't have anything on here right now. So just as a quick exercise, we'll go ahead and add some actual items here on my calendar. Now, typically when you're assigning that time daily, when you're managing your calendar, you want to be able to at least map out the next day at the very least, but a really nice bonus will be to map out your entire week. So the first thing I'll do here, 8 a.m., I'll go ahead and add some time here, and I'll just call this calendar management. And I want to go ahead and quickly assign a category to that. 
So I'll click on categorize and I'll create a new category here. All right. I'll call this new, or I can just overwrite an existing one, this orange category. I'll apply this orange category. I'll rename this as calendar blocking, or I could have said calendar management. I'll go ahead and press okay. Once I click save and close, I can see that I clearly have a color coded block here as well. Give myself a little space, maybe around 9 a.m. I'll go ahead and work on a particular project, All right? So this will be updates for project A. And this is gonna be maybe two hours here. And I'll go ahead and assign that. Since I already have project A, I'll go ahead and assign project A here. I'll go ahead and save and close. And as you can see, I'm blocking off time. I'm getting my alerts here already. I'll throw in my lunch. My lunch I'll just leave as default, 12 to one, one hour, All right? And after lunch, maybe not immediately after lunch, maybe around 1.15 or so, okay, so 1.15 to maybe 2.15, one hour. This would be our team meeting. And I can assign a category to here. Maybe this will be for team meeting. So I'll go ahead and assign, create another category. This one will be for team meeting. I'll assign this here. Go ahead and save and close. And as you can see, we can go ahead and build this out. So what I want you to do, I'm not gonna go ahead and, <laughs> and build out the rest of the day here. I want you to go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and take a look at your calendar, at least for the next day, and go ahead and block off time on your calendar. Make sure to include a block of time, at least 15 minutes to manage your actual calendar. And go ahead and just kind of map out, think about what your your next day looks like, and go ahead and block off as much time as you can on here as well. Add some categories to it so we can have some color so you can easily identify what you need to do and come right back. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you had some fun with calendar blocking. Let's move on to segment three here where we'll discuss three more tools that we can use to effectively strategize our day. The first tool we'll talk about here is applying and managing Quick Steps. Quick Steps has some really nice pre-built Quick Steps that we can use with just a simple click of a button. We can perform several tasks on a particular message. We'll talk about conditional formatting. If you want to receive important messages with some special font or color display, we can apply conditional formatting to our message. And then finally, we'll talk about creating rules. Now rules can be very simple or they can be very, very complex. We'll take a look at just some basic examples of how we can utilize rules to automate our process here as well. I'm back here in my Outlook and let's talk about quick steps. So quick steps can be found on your home tab. It has its own command group. Here are my quick steps. And depending on if your ribbon is completely expanded, you can see quite a few quick steps here. I can see six of them. Here's a quick step for follow-up. Here's a quick step to my manager. Done. I can create a new one, team email. And let's see if I just mouse over each one. Okay, so this one moves selected email to a folder after marking the email as read. This one forwards the selected email to my manager. I just need to let Outlook know who my manager is. Here's the other option here. Create a new email to my team. And for the reply and delete, I can reply to the sender and delete the original email. So this is very effective for just kind of, you know, cleaning up your inbox. If you're done, send a quick reply and delete that message here as well. If I want to, I can click on this more drop down here. And I can either go ahead and create a new quick step that has some kind of built in options in here as well if I want to. 
So I can go ahead and convert a message into a meeting if I want to, or I can forward to a particular individual. I can flag and move, right? So different options that I can use here. Let's go ahead and use a flag and move, right? Because we talked about flagging messages. So here's my project queue. I can either click on the message or I can right click on it. And this will pull up my quick steps here. All right, so I have some options here. If I want to apply a new quick step, I can click on flag and move. All right, and now the flag and move, it's already pre-built. We just need to kind of tell Outlook exactly where to go. So it's called flag and move. So I can choose my flag. I can say, you know what, this is due this week. I need to follow up on this this week. And I can move it to a particular folder. If you've created any folders, you can do that. So here on the other folder, a good thing to do is to create a new folder, All right? And maybe I'll just call this, I already have a search folder created for my follow-up messages here. So maybe I'll just go ahead and create a folder. I'll just call this, uh, maybe this will be my manager folder. And I'll go ahead and press OK. And I'll press OK. So it'll be flag for this week. It will be marked as red and it will go to my manager folder. If I click finish, I can go ahead and apply that there as well. All right. So let's see. I'll go ahead and right click now. I'll click on quick steps. I'll click on flag and move. And as you can see, that project queue has been moved to my manager folder here as well. Right. So that's the benefit of working with a quick step. There's some other quick steps that we can uh, use that are either built in. I'm going to go back to my inbox here, to my messages. And this time I'll go ahead and choose another message here. This one is already flagged. I'll choose this one. And maybe to my manager. I want to go ahead and forward the selected email to my manager. I just need, just need to go ahead and specify who my manager is. I'll click on two. And I'll just type in a name here. Okay. And then I have even have other options, but I'll just click save. All right. And if I right click and I go ahead and use that quick step to my manager, it opens up the message and I can just simply type in a quick message here to send it to my manager. So very good. Let's go ahead and create a new quick step and we'll go through the process and just see what it kind of looks like here. So this time I'll click on the drop down. I want to manage my quick steps. So this shows the quick steps that I've created. Notice if you've created several quick steps and for some reason it's just too much, they're not working well, we can reset to the defaults. This will basically remove all the quick steps that you have created and put us back to the default quick steps here. Either way, I want to go ahead and create a new one. This one will be custom. And I'll just leave it as my quick step. The whole concept here is that you can add several actions. Right. And you can add a shortcut to a particular quick step. You can even add a kind of quick tool tip here as well. So, for example, for this quick step, maybe I want to go ahead and let's see. Maybe I want to go ahead and categorize the message. So I'll categorize it. I'll give this the project A category. I also want to go ahead and add an action here. Let's see what I'll do. In terms of filing, I could move it to a folder if I want to. I'll set the importance as high, either high, normal, or low. And I'll go ahead and add one more action here. And let's see. I'll Go ahead and create a task with the text of the actual message. Okay. So I'll go ahead and click finish. I can assign a shortcut if I want to. I'll leave that blank. And I have a tooltip that I can actually use here. Notice it's called categorize message. I'll go ahead and click finish. And once I click OK, it moves it to the top of my list here. So if I were to right click on a particular message, I can see that those actions will be performed here. Here it is at the very top. If I click on categorize message, 
right? So I'm creating a task from it here. I'll fill out the details later. I'll just click save and close. And there we go. So that's how quick step works. You can either program an existing quick step. You can quickly create a new quick step that does not show up on the original list here, or you can go ahead and manage quick steps and create your own. So go ahead and create at least two quick steps and come right back. Welcome back. The next tool we'll take a look at here is called conditional formatting. So in this case, every message that comes from Megan, I want to make sure that I do not miss it. And so maybe I want the message to appear, not as this really nice, subtle and calming blue, but maybe a bright red color so that I do not miss any of my messages from Megan here. And we'll use conditional formatting for that. Under the view tab, I'm going to go ahead and click on view settings. Now I wish they just had a big conditional formatting button. We kind of have to dig through the view settings here for it, but it's okay. Click on view, go to view settings. And once I click on there, I get the advanced view settings dialog box. What I want to do is go ahead and click on conditional formatting, where I have user defined fonts on each message. So it's very basic, but it's a very, very powerful tool. I'll click on conditional formatting. And notice we are already using some conditional formatting. For example, our unread messages has this blue right? This blue font, as we can see here, and some other ones here as well. But I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. So I'll go ahead and click on add. And I'll just call this one, um, let's see, I'll call this one my manager, right? So my, any messages from my manager, I want to make sure I don't miss them. So I just need to go ahead and give it a name, which I've already done. And then I'll go ahead and specify my condition and choose my font here as well, All right? So I'll choose the font first, and I'll just choose something very, you know, very vibrant here. I'll choose this show card Gothic font here. I can either change the font style from regular to bold, so forth and so on. The size, I can make it small, big, or normal. But all I want to do is change the color, and I'll make this, uh, Let's see, what color do I want this to be? I don't want it to be red. I'll make it aqua. Maybe a little easier on the eyes here for presenting. I'll go ahead and click OK. So two down, one to go. The next one is just the condition. So for the condition, I want to make sure that it is from a particular individual. So I'll click on from. And I'll go ahead and type in Megan in here. And Megan, I'll press OK. All right. So notice I do have other options in here. So this is kind of acting like a rule, but I want to keep it simple. I just want this color. I'll go ahead and press OK. I'll change the font color, actually. I think that's going to be a little too difficult to use. I'll just use red. I'll press OK. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And once I press OK, all of my Megan messages should have that bright red. And there we go. So if you apply this font, right, this kind of format, I don't think you'll be missing any more messages from your manager here as well. All right. So go ahead and think about maybe you missed a message recently. You don't want to miss any more. Go ahead and click on your view settings and click on view settings and create a new conditional format from a particular sender. Have fun and come right back. Welcome back. So our third tool that we'll be discussing is creating rules. Creating rules is a very popular thing to do in Outlook. And there's several ways that we can create rules. The traditional way is to click on your file tab. So if you click on your file tab, you can head on over to rules and alerts. We can manage rules and alerts. If I click on here, this will reveal any rules that I currently have, any rules I'm currently using here. As you can see, I have four rules and they have sp special conditions. So for example, this rule will move any messages from Adele to my follow-up folder for my project X. 
So any message that arrives with the term project X in the subject will also be moved to my follow up folder. From here, I can go ahead and manage these rules. I can turn them off so they'll stop running. I can delete them and I can go ahead and edit them here as well. If I click on new rule, this is the advanced, right? So this is the advanced rules wizard here. So I can make a decision in terms of what I want to do. So I can either move messages from someone to a folder and this will happen automatically. So based on the incoming message, Outlook will scan the message and look for a particular sender and it will apply a particular action here as well. So the first thing we need to do is select a template. So I can say move messages from someone to a particular folder. Notice the options down here will change here as well. If I click on move messages with specific words in the subject to a folder, I can do that. All right. So different options here. I can even flag messages from someone for follow up. So if I'm getting messages from someone, maybe it's relating to a project. They're just sending me messages about project updates. I can go ahead and flag those there as well. We have different options to stay up to date. All right. So we can just kind of get some alerts here. Or I can start from a blank rule on messages that I receive, right? Or I can even create a rule based on messages that I send here as well. So if I were to go through this, maybe I want to flag messages from someone for follow up. I just need to go ahead and specify who that person is and when do I want to follow up. So if I click on people, it pulls up my address book here and I'll just type in, I'll just select someone from the list here. All right, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And any messages from Lee, I want to follow up the next day. I'll press OK. If I want to, I can just click Finish. If I want to add some more conditions, I can go ahead and do that. So again, when you're creating a rule, it can be very, as very simple or very complex as you want it to be. For example, with specific words in the subject where my name is in the to-do box where it's marked as important right so we have a lot of different parameters here so basically when that message comes through outlook will scan the message for you and apply the different rules here as well i can keep going if i want to different actions right so the whole idea is it checks for a condition and it applies an action I'll just click finish. I'll click apply and I'll click OK. We go back here and the easiest way to create a rule or most efficient way, simple way, this message that I received, I'll go ahead and right click on it here. And under rules, I can just create a quick rule that always moves messages from the sender to a particular folder. If I click here, I get a nice, simple dialog box here. Maybe I'll send messages from this individual sender to the follow-up folder. I'll go ahead and press OK. All right. And just like that, you can see the message was moved to my follow-up folder. So here it is as well. All right. So when we're working with rules, we can either use just right-click and we'll have some options right here. and if I want to create another rule based on this message, I can either from a particular individual with text that's in the subject line, and I can apply one of these following actions down here as well. If I want more advanced options, I can always click on advanced options, and this will bring me back to that rules wizard that we found on our file tab. And again, there's a lot of conditions that we can specify here as well. Quick to note, we can check for conditions such as flagged mail. So if you don't want to use search folders or categorize folders, we do have the capability to check messages for a flag. And we do have the capability to check messages that have been assigned to a particular category. So this is just another option that we can use here as well. But again, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want to here. All right, so go ahead and create at least two rules. If you don't want to use the search folders, go ahead and create a rule for categorized mail to move it to a particular folder and go ahead and for follow up mail 
here as well and come right back. Welcome back and congratulations on completing our course. Just a recap of what we covered today. So we talked about recording task based items and we see how even emails can become task based items. We realized that after recording task based items, we need a way to check them. So we turned on our to do bar and we were able to create search folders and we were able to filter by flag messages or to categorize by categorized mail. So after we check them, we we're able to prioritize them by applying the Pareto principle, prioritizing our top 20%. Remember, they're not distributed equally, maybe in some cases, but typically that's not the case. And once we prioritize them, we were able to act on them. And this is the roadmap that we've taken today, recording tasks, checking them, prioritizing them, and acting on them. We can see that Outlook is a really nice tool for us to manage our tasks on a daily basis. Don't forget to add time to your calendar every day to actually manage your calendar and prioritize your day as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have fun. And I hope that you take advantage of all of the tools that we've learned today so that you'll be more effective with strategizing your day with Outlook. Thanks for watching. To earn certificates and watch our courses without ads, check out learnitanytime.com.